Hello everyone, this is O2. Are you ready to breathe in some fresh open frameworks? This video is part two of a series of videos that teaches you how to make a simple game with open frameworks. And today, we're going to make a basic game infrastructure. First of all, I'm going to introduce the concept of ECS, or the Entity Component System. So, what is the Entity Component System? Unity Docs provides a simple explanation, so let's go to Google and type Entity Component System. Then click on this website. So the Entity Component System is a different paradigm of writing code, specifically writing programs in a data-oriented way. To be specific, our code is divided into entities, components, and systems. Entities don't have data or behavior. They can be thought of identifiers to provide relationship. Components only contain data and no behavior. Systems only contain behaviors and don't store any data. So systems typically take components as inputs and transform the data. Because the topic of ECS and data-oriented design is very complex, I will provide some other resources in the description section for those who want to take a deeper look into this concept. Before we proceed any further, I would like to give credit to Mr. Doob, the creator of 3JS, because this tutorial series has been strongly influenced by his article called Start Making a Game. I will provide a link for his article in the description section below. However, Mr. Dupe says that he is using the ECS pattern in his article. I personally disagree. In my opinion, I think his code is more object-oriented and doesn't completely follow the ECS pattern since the distinction, distinction between data, behavior, and identity aren't quite clear. So here's what's going to happen. For this video and the next video, I will teach you guys the ideas from Mr. Dupe's article in the, in the domain of C++ and open frameworks. Then for the first video, I will try to change our code to a more data-oriented structure while further implementing the ECS paradigm. I think this will let you guys easily compare the differences between these two programming patterns. So let's move on for now. For this video, I prepared a diagram that summarizes the classes we are going to create today. We are going to make a component-based class, an animation and player class that inherits from this base class. We're also going to create a game object manager class that uses a safe array to safely add, operate on, and delete game objects. Last of all, we're going to make a model importer class to encapsulate the code we wrote in our previous video. So, let's make a game object class. Let's head over to our source folder, right click, add, new item, choose the header file. Next, let's include our osmain.header and our component.header. The game object class is going to hold a vector of shared pointers of type component. The method getComponent will return an object, so it receives the name of the component, iterates over all the components in its vector. Then it compares the input value with the component's name and dynamically downcasts the component to the provided type.
If successful, it returns the object. The add component function adds the object to our component vector after upcasting to its base class, which is of type component. The remove component function erases the given object in our, in our array. If the object really exists in our array, We can overload this function with another method that removes the given component by its name. Next, we're going to make the component class. Let's include our osmain.header file again. Then we're going to use for de declaration for a game object class. This is needed because both the game object class and the component class references each other, causes, uh, causing a mutual recursion. This class will hold a smart pointer of game object type and a variable for its name. We're going to initialize these values with the constructor. Let's add two virtual functions called update and draw, and a function that returns the component's name. Now, let's create and write the remaining code for our component class's C++ file. Next, we're going to make a safe array class to safely add and remove elements without messing with the array itself while it's being iterated. So we need three vectors called current Q, add Q, and remove Q. The function add Q checks if the add q vector is empty. And if it's not, adds the elements to the current q vector, 
and clears the add queue vector. The remove queued function checks if the remove queue vector is empty. And if it is not, checks if elements in the current queue vector are in the removed queue vector. If false, it pushes back the elements into a temp array, which will later on become the current queue vector. So in short, only the elements from the current queue vector that aren't in the removed queue vector remain in the new current queue vector. Next, we clear the removed queue vector. Let's add a function to check if we have elements in either our add queue or current queue vector. A function to add elements to our add queue vector and a function to add elements to our remove queue vector. Lastly, we are going to make a function called for each that takes a callback function, executes the add queued and remove queued methods, then uses every element in our current queue vector as a parameter for the provided callback function. Next, we're going to make a game object manager class. This class uses the SafeArray class to store shared pointers of type game object. Let's create a method to create and remove game objects and an update and draw function. So our create game object function is going to make a game object shared pointer, uses the safe arrays add function to store it, and returns the pointer. The remove game object function uses the safe arrays remove function.
The update and draw functions will use lambda functions as callbacks for the safe arrays for each function. So for every element in the current queue vector of our safe array, we are going to execute the game objects update and draw function. The purpose of this class is to control our FBX animation. So we're going to make a function that sets, sets the animation by using its name and a function that sets the animation by its index. Our player class is also going to inherit from the component class and will be used to create and utilize the animation component class.
The last class we are going to create today is the model importer class. This class's main purpose is to encapsulate all the messy code from the previous video. Let's store our shared pointers of type ofxxvx with their names. Have a function that imports the models by their names. A function to return the entire map of the, o of the fbx files. and a function that returns a shared pointer of an individual model by its name. So, mostly copy and pasting the code from before for the import function. One major difference is that we are going to make a pair for the model's names and the shared pointer to store it in our array of maps. For the get model function, we are only returning the value and not the key. So the value we are returning is currently a shared pointer of type OFX FBX. I know it was a long journey, but we have finally finished writing our classes. Now let's actually use our code. In our ofapp.header file, let's include our model importer.header, player.header, and game object manager dot header.
Next, let's make a game object manager. Let's move on to our ofapp.c++ file and make a model importer object and call its import function. Then create a game object and a player object. Next, we will add the player object as, an, as a component to our game object. Lastly, we want to call our game object manager's update function and draw function respectively. So, that sums it up. Although the final result isn't quite different from our first video, we have successfully created some essential parts for the main structure of our game. So, see you guys next time and thank you for watching this video.